Today's lesson from Pastor Shiva is lesson 30. What are the past four stages? When created by Lord Shiva, the soul is young and immature. Its process of growing up over many lifetimes happens in four stages. This is much like the development of a lotus flower. First, it sends its roots into the pond's mud. Then it grows a stem and leaves that reach the water's surface. Finally, it blossoms in the full sun. Yet each previous stage of growth is still there supporting the flower. Shiva's grace guides this process so that we learn and grow toward the light through experience under the divine law of karma. As the soul progresses through each stage, it becomes less instinctive and more spiritual. Shiva is continually creating souls, so at any point in time, there are on the earth young souls, adolescent souls, middle-aged souls, and old souls. The four padas, stages of maturation, Acharya, Kriya, Yoga, and Jnana. Charya is good conduct and humble service, attending the temple and helping with temple chores. Here the main work is harnessing the instincts and developing virtuous qualities. Kriya is the stage of devotion or love of God expressed through home puja and temple worship. Yoga is the period of meditation and inner striving under a guru's guidance. At this stage, the temple is a sacred space for contemplation as Shiva's veiling power gives way to his revealing grace. Jnana is the wisdom stage where the realized soul sees himself as one with the temple deity. These stages are also experienced in each lifetime. As children, we learn good conduct, as summarized in the yamas and niyamas. Then we are taught worship, expressing heart-melting devotion for God, gods, and guru. Next, we may learn to meditate with the goal of gaining true wisdom. The four padas are not alternate ways, but progressive steps on a one path called the sanmarga. Nor does the soul give up the practices of one pada when it enters the next. Thus the mature soul in jnana is a paragon of wisdom, yoga, devotion, and virtue. The greatest yogis still love and worship Shiva. And we have Gurudeva's quote. Some people think when you get to the yoga stage, you don't have to do the worship. You don't have to do the service. You just do the yoga. In our Saiva Siddhanta philosophy, when you get to the yoga stage and the yana stage, you still enjoy the worship. You still enjoy the service. These are dear and intricate parts of your life. There's a one word in the University of Madras Tama lexicon that summarizes the whole lesson. It's called Nalupada Saivam. So Nalu is four. So the Saivism of four padas, is how it would render in English. It's translated as a Saiva doctrine that the initiate should pass successively through Charya, Kriya, Yoga, and Jnana stages and then obtain moksha. Pretty simple, right? 
<laughs> got the whole path of Saiva Siddhanta in one word. <laughs> Nalu Pada Saiva. There's a verse in the Tirumandaram that gives a little detail about each one that's quite interesting. Verse 1447. Those who follow the Yana path and who have been blessed with Siva Yana will ultimately attain oneness with Shiva. Those who follow the yoga path and who are practicing the eight disciplines of yoga will evolve into siddhas in due course and install themselves in a state of total absorption, samadhi. Those who follow the kriya path in accordance with their maturity and choice of deity will perform the relevant ritualistic worship daily without fail. Those who have set themselves in the charya path are intent on rendering service to the devotees and to the temples spread over this large world. Isn't that a nice illustration of each? Gives a very good sense of what each one is all in one verse. <clears throat> We did a webinar a number of months ago on Saiva Siddhanta, and we gave this idea there. This is just a review of it for those of you who were, remember. Otherwise, it'd probably be a new concept. It's that we have the pada, but along with each pada, we have a marga and a patavi. What in the world is a patavi? Huh? <laughs> well, the pada tells us what we're supposed to practice. Charya, Kriya, Yoga, and Jnana. And then with the pada, there's a marga. Well, the marga shows us the relationship of the soul to God in that pada. And the idea is, as we progress through charya, kriya, yoga, and jnana, the relationship to God gets closer. God's up here, we're down here, and as we progress, we finally touch in the jnana pada. And the patavi is the Sanskrit word for attainment. Each pada has its own specific patavi, attainment or goal. So we don't use the word patavi in the master course, but we use the word attainment, the English rendering of patavi. But it's nice to know that there is a, a word there that describes the attainment that's the result. In other words, when we follow the charya pada well, eventually the attainment or the patavi comes to us. So we'll just review those. Charyapada, as we know, is the stage of good conduct, and the marga that goes with it is the dasa marga, path of servitude. So we start out in the relationship of servant to master. So when it comes to servant to master, uh, what was that show, Downton Abbey? Was that what it was called? Or you, I think of a big house where the old fashioned house couple centuries ago where the servants are all downstairs and the royalty, the master and family are upstairs. And some of the servants never even go upstairs. <laughs> Only the head servants go upstairs. So that's Dasa Marga. You know, you're down in a basement and you don't even go upstairs. You know the master's upstairs. Somebody's there, but you don't really see them. You're at a great distance. And that's Dasa Marga. And the <clears throat> patavi, or the attainment, is called salokya, sharing the world of God. In other words, we're in the same house. We're in the same loka. Previously, we weren't sure if God existed or not. So salokya doesn't sound like much, but it's an improvement over not knowing if God exists or not. You feel God exists, but he's at a great distance. That's Salokya. Then we get the Kriyapada, religious action or worship stage. Saputra Marga, 
true son's way, but we move closer. We're not, the soul is now like the son, S-O-N, to the father. So that's a lot closer than servant to master, son to father. But still there's a great difference. The son, in this case, imagine a young son, is quite distinct from the father. So there's a closeness. So we've moved there. And the patavi is called samipya, nearness to God. So we're near, like a son is when talking to his father. So there's a nearness. Before there was a distance, servant to master. Now there's a nearness. And we got yogapada, stage of uniting or meditation. Sakamarga, way of the friend. Oh, well, God's a good friend. So friend is much closer and much more equal than son to father. So we talk to God and feel God is a friend to us. Sarupya patavi, likeness to God. Well, that's the idea. In meditation, we start experiencing inner light, inner sounds. Those are the sounds and lights of the superconscious mind. And so we're sharing the same mind, the superconscious mind. God is experiencing the superconscious mind. We're experiencing the superconscious mind. So there's a likeness. We're experiencing some of the same things because we're meditating. And we have the Yanapada, stage of wisdom, Sanmarga, or true path. God is our dearest beloved, implying transcendence of individuality and merger with the divine. In the monistic philosophies, we look at it that it means they're the same. At that point, there's no difference between Shiva and the soul, between you and Shiva. You know, lots of Yoga Swami statements and songs talk about that. I am you, you are I. There's only one person. It's that idea of eventually being in a state where all you see is one person, which is yourself, which is Shiva. There's no second. That's the idea there. And Sayujya, Patavi, or union with God. No difference. There's another way I explain that in less technical way. <clears throat> I did a publisher's desk on it once. It's called Our Three Kinds of Temples. Publisher's desk uses the word mandira for temple, Sanskrit. We can use the word koval. Publisher's desk uses Sanskrit terms. <clears throat> be more general. The first kind of temple is this kind of temple. The village temple or Pura Kovil. It's natural when we first get involved in religion, when we worship, we come to the Pura Kovil, we come to the temple and we are the devotee attending the puja, and the priest is doing the puja. So it's a very simple situation. But when we really do well at that, we can move on to the second type, which is the griha kovil, or the home shrine. Attending the pura kovil provides us the training, the experience, the knowledge of how to conduct in a very simple way, a puja in our home shrine. If we didn't attend the temple, we couldn't just say, okay, now I'm going to do a puja. We would have no idea how to do it. Well, it's a training ground. It's an informal training ground, usually, as the priest isn't teaching us. In some temples, the priest does teach Atmarta puja. But in any sense, in either situation, by going to the Purakoville, we eventually are able to have our own Grahakova, or home shrine, or make our home more temple-like because we have a shrine and we do an Atmarta Puja at it every day, so the vibration of the home goes up. 
But when that's really going well, we should go one temple further. That's called the Atma Kovil, where we're meditating. Again, it's very hard just to meditate if you try and do that as your first practice. But if it's based upon first perfecting the Pura Kovil, then the Griha Kovil, then we learn how to worship in the Atma Kovil. Yogaswami used to talk about that a lot in his songs. Worshipping in the Atma Kovil is one of his strong themes. Well, that's a way of explaining Saiva Siddhanta without any technical terms at all. It's kind of the opposite of Pada, Marga, and Patavi. <laughs> but it's saying the same thing. It's a progressive practice. First, we master the first stage to a certain degree. We don't have to be perfect. Then we're able to take up the second stage. We master that to a certain degree. And then we're able to take up the third stage. Thank you.